We're real life sisters, Kay and Chai, and we real life want to be your sisters too. Welcome to the family. No takesies, backsies. Now let's get on with the Kay and Chai show. In June of 2020, we got to participate in a really cool protest and awareness event uh, where paddle boarders went out on Tahoe for a eight minute and 46 second seconds of silence out on the water on their paddle boards. And if that number sounds familiar to you, it's, it's because that's the amount of time that, um, the officer kneeled on George Floyd's neck, ultimately killing him. And this, this, man's tragic death did become a catalyst for the movement. Um, And so he certainly didn't hopefully die in vain. And there have been, has been progress there, but how do we get to the point where a white officer being filmed and surrounded by other officers feels emboldened enough to put someone in a chokehold where they repeatedly say they can't breathe for nearly nine minutes and ultimately kills them? Well, it's a hard thing to witness, but the uh, the reality of the situation is, is that there are more situations that happen like this to Black people and people of color than, than anybody else. And um, that's not just us talking about it or you seeing it on the news or seeing that one horrible instance because it got filmed. There are many other uh, uh, that of these instances that didn't get filmed. You know, among those who had contact with the, the police between the years 2002 and 2011, Black people were two and a half times more likely than whites to experience the threat or use of non-lethal force. So we're, we're talking about the usage or the threat of force on their bodies, two and a half more times likely. So when you think about that in practicality, what does that mean between the difference of the Black person who's getting pulled over and the white person who's getting pulled over? It means that the Black person has a double- the 250% chance. chance more, right? Like if we're looking at that in terms of statistics, like 2.5 is not 25%. That's 250% more likely to experience the threat or use of force. And this is from the Bureau of Justice Statistics. So this is, these are high level stats being shared, so, but it's, it's not only evident in our justice system. When we look at unemployment from the U.S. Department of Labor, among Black people, the unemployment is about 4% percent higher than white people. And you might think, okay, like 4%, that's not too bad. And we might say, okay, sure. That's unusual. But once they have a job, they're good to go, right? No, the median income is still $30,000 more for white families than for black families, $30,000. It's 42% more for white families than black families. So, okay. So, well, well, they don't get as many jobs and they don't make as much, but there's a lot of poor people out there, right? And disproportionately, a lot of poor Black people. Here's another interesting statistic for you from the U.S. Census Bureau. Research in our country shows that one out of every 12 white people are in poverty. But here's the thing. One out of every five Black people are in poverty. More than 20% of the black people in our country are in poverty. And you might think, okay, well, that does mean that out of those five, there are four that are doing okay, right? And some of them are even wealthy. Well, let's look at the median household wealth. Well, median household wealth is when we start to look at the full wealth uh, portfolio of a family, which includes inheritances and generational wealth that comes in. Now, look, white households in the U.S. have a thousand percent more household wealth than black families in the U.S. A thousand percent more household wealth. Now, obviously, this comes from black people in America not having the same access to generational wealth that white people in America have had access to because of systemic racism, because of legal racism, and because of slavery. And that that source is the U.S. Federal Reserve Survey of Consumer Finances. So again, we're talking high level reporting from our own government. If we come back to our justice system, you know, black people accounted for nearly 32% of arrest related deaths, despite being just 12% of the population. They're also disproportionately represented in, uh, in our jails, they get higher sentences. In fact, one of the um, studies in my sociology 101 book that we use in class is the fact that 
If you are a white person with a jail time record, you still have a higher chance of being hired than a black person with no jail time record. So that, that when we talk about systemic racism, it's numbers like these that clearly reflect, reflect that it's real and it's in play.